Hello, my name is Kevin Scott and I'm going to show you the basic controls of a Duplex 420 steam, which is the machine here. This also um, relates to a 340 steam, um, but I'm going to show you this, this 420. Okay, now before we start to use a machine, any machine, um, you need to check the mains cable. Um, this is a brand new machine, but we still need to check the mains cable, okay? And it's a matter of taking it off the cable cleats and then running your hand along the cable. Just to make sure there's no abrasions, scuffs, bumps, cuts, or whatever that could have been done um, in transport or it could have been done by a previous user. This is the, one of the most important che checks you can do with a machine. Okay, so we'll make sure it's okay and it's absolutely fine. Now, there's five basic controls on the, on the machine itself. Top of hand you've got a red button, um, and that's the main power switch. Below that you've got a black button, um, which is the steam activating button. Okay. Um, you've got a yellow handle on top, which actually starts the machine. Uh, and then down below, on the base of the machine, you have the, your, some more operating controls. Okay, so the three controls on the side of the, uh, the cover. You've got a mop-up switch, and that does what it says. It activates the mop-up, so in the up position, the machine's not going to pick anything up. Um, in the down position, it's going to scrub the floor and pick up. Second switch is a slide switch and that moves up the settings. The bottom position, the machine's in its transport mode and you can wheel it around with its little transport wheels underneath. And then any other position is a working position. And as you move up the settings, you put more pressure onto the floor. So rule of thumb, deep pole carpet, medium pole carpet, light scrubbing of hard floors, heavy scrubbing of hard floors. Okay, so it's very simple to use. A new machine, I'd have it on the second one up. We've got new brushes, a new machine. You don't need to, um, to put too much pressure on. All you do is, is wear out the brushes quicker if you put too much pressure down. This switch is called the reset. Um, if you was in a room and you call something around the brush, the brush will stop. Um, and to protect the motor, this overload will pop it up. You have to wait about 30 seconds before it can reset. So you unplug the machine, take out from the brushes, whatever, jam the brushes, and then reset this. Okay, the switch is actually inside this rubber bung, so you need to push it quite hard to reset it. Okay, now we come to the tanks on the machine. There's two uh, blue tanks, one each side of the machine, and then there's a central tank, which is the recovery tank that you, that you is collected into. The water tank on the side just comes off, uh, that, so you can take it off to the tap to be filled, and you can fill it with a nice clean jug. That sits in there the side there, and then you have a pipe that comes from the tank to the steam generator. Okay, to undo the the pipe you just pull the bit in and then to fit it, just push it in. Uh, steam generator, that sits on that side of the tank and that's got the water connection and an electrical connection. This is the electrical connection. And if it's not connected, and when you come to connect it, you just need to make sure that you line up the, the pins. And you can only go in one way, so if it's not fitting in, just turn it slightly and it will pop in. And then do it up, finger tight, and that's the electrical connection connected. There's a switch on the steam generator, that needs to be in the one position. Um, and that means the steam will, um, machine will steam, generate steam when you're using the machine. Okay, now I've shown you the, uh, the controls. I'm going to plug the machine in. Obviously, we've checked the cable. We've got it on the right setting, which is the second one up. So, plug the machine in. Switch on. Now, as I said before, the red switch is the main power, and that will light up when we, when we switch it on. The black switch needs to be in the, the one position. There's a light come on on the tank, which means it's ready to use. And to actually start the machine, um, you just push down on this handle. Always start the machine with the handle in the upright position. That can be quite noisy, so um, I'm just going to use it and then I'll explain what we did once, we're, once we've uh, used it for a bit. Okay. So just push down on the handle.
any dirt now all in the in this central tank. The recovery tank and that can just be taken off and empty um, when it starts to look like it's full. Lid sits on my side. Very simple. Okay, so now we're going to talk about this water release trigger here. I don't know if you've seen that when I was using the machine. Um, you can actually pull that while you're using the machine and it will let extra water out of the water tank. You don't need to pull it all the time, but if you have a stain on the floor that's particularly um, hard to, to remove, you can put extra water down out of the tank and sort of rinse out the stain and help the, the steam uh, move the stain out of the fibres of the carpet. A uh, machine does carpet and the hard floor, so if you're using it on a hard floor, um, you generally don't need to use this trigger because there's enough water being put on the floor but obviously the carpet absorbs a bit more moisture so you might need a bit of um, help on some stains around coffee machines or, or etc or, your, or you may be cleaning. Okay, now this is hyperscale, this is what I mentioned earlier and um, this is a scale inhibitor and you need to put about a quarter of this bottle into the water tank once a day. Okay, you no need to put it in every time you use the machine, but just put it in once a day. First job of the day, put some more hydro scale in, um, and that'll keep the, the, the steam generator scale free. Okay, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got the cable in one hand, and I'm using the machine with, with one hand. When you're using the machine, always try and look away from the cable. So now I'm going to show you how to clean the machine and to take the brushes uh, off and put them back on again. Um, there's two types of brushes that you'll generally be using. Grey, uh, which are universal, carpet and hard floor. 90% of the time you'll be using these on, on both floors uh, because you can be cleaning the carpet and then running straight onto the hard floor and clean that or vice versa on, on the hard floor and then straight onto the carpet. Um, because you don't put any cleaning chemicals in the machine, you haven't got to worry about um, which chemical you're going to put in the machine for which type of floor because you're doing the floor with the, the uh, water and the steam. The other type is the black brush, which is a bit more aggressive, and this is just for hard floors. Okay, um, So if you had a particularly large uh, floor that was um, quite dirty, you could put these on um, and get you know, a good scrub with the black brushes. I'm going to switch the machine off and unplug it and then I can take you through the, the tanks. Okay, so I've unplugged the machine and um, so it's all safe uh, to take off the tanks and the brushes. So the tanks first, let's connect the water. Yeah. And that can be just taken and rinsed under a tap or in the sink or just all wiped with a, with a damp cloth. The lid can come off and the lid's also got instructions on how to use the machine. Okay, what the settings do, um, and also that number if there's a, an issue you want to speak to someone, you can always phone this number and someone will be able to give you some advice over the phone. The recovery tape comes out, okay, and there's no left or right to that, so that can go in either way around. And then it just needs to be cleaned under a, under a tap. Now, if you Wipe this when you've just finished with the machine. The dirt comes off instantly. And you can keep that tank nice and clean. If you leave that dirt in there, it'll dry and it'll be very difficult to, to clean. So wipe it when you've finished using the machine. The steam generator, that needs to be disconnected from the cable. Okay, and then there's a little cap you need to put on there. This has got an electrical connection in it, obviously, so that's yeah, just a, a wipe with a damp cloth. And so, if you do it when you're finished, that was be easy, nice and easy to clean. The brushes. Off from the brushes. 
brushes pull out. It's very simple to get the brushes on and off the machine. There's no left or right to the brushes, so you can put them on either way around. You're not going to get them back to front. And when you put them on the machine, let's go over this gear. And if they don't fit, just slightly turn them and they'll just fit on. Okay, when you're finished with the machine for the day, I'd recommend you rinse the, uh, the brushes under a, a, a tap in a, in a sink and put them to one side just to drain off for the next day's use. That can go back on there. Turn them slightly. If it won't fit, just turn it and it'll just, it's never a tight fit. And then you can, easiest way to get these bolts back on the machine is just to put it on the inside Allen key. And the whole process of cleaning the machine really shouldn't take more than about five minutes when you're finished. It's very easy to, to use and to clean. Um, you need to wipe the belts, which are these black uh, rubber pieces here. And how the machine works is that if you switch off the mop up, these belts don't rotate, so it doesn't take any dirt into the central tank. So you can do a pre-scrub, especially useful if you're doing it on a, on a hard floor, okay? But 99% of the time you leave that down because you want to put water and steam on the floor and pick it up at the same time. And lastly, when you've finished cleaning the machine um, and wiping, we have a silicon spray. So you need to spray on the belt. You can take the recovery tank out. I mean, so I can't put too much silicon on the machine. It's a, it's a water um, inhibitor, so it'll, it'll keep the, the belts in good condition. You can even spray underneath. Uh, because when you come to clean the machine, you also need to wipe underneath the motor, and then you can spray. And the beauty of that is that now, when you put the tanks back on, the machine's ready for the next person to use it. Um, so you haven't got to worry about uh, cleaning the machine before you can use it the next day. You know, all you need to do is fill it with, with cold water, um, some hydroscale, and away you go. Okay, there's also an instruction book that comes with the machine. It's only 300 pages long, but it's in five languages. Um, it tells you everything you need to know about to use the machine, look after the machine, and specifications, noise, vibration level, all sorts of information in there. Um, however, there is a short guide, which is a, a quick start guide for the machine, which is in the safe and poster size. Um, what the controls do, I see the slide switch, I have to fill it, I have to use it, I have to clean the floor, just move back and forwards, there's a few sort of moments on. Um, the steam generator, um, what not to do with the steam generator, okay. Um, how to clean the machine, and then the list of, of chemicals that we recommend. Um, you can use hydroscales included in that. Um, any cleaning chemicals, we recommend that you only trigger spray those onto a floor if you have a stain on the floor. Um, just trigger spray the stain, run the machine over using steam, um, and then you're not wasting chemicals putting it all over the, over the floor, and you don't put chemical, uh, cleaning chemical in the machine. Obviously, I keep uh, saying that, but it's very important. Okay, thanks for watching this short video. Uh, if you've got any questions or, or comments, just put it in the, uh, the comments on the video below, or obviously you can contact us direct on our office number 01227 771 276. Thank you.